Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day, thanks in a large part to our pals at the VFS School of Game Design. Thank you so much, Vancouver Film School. Now, today's rundown is dedicated to our first three sponsors on our sponsorship initiative. That's Timberwolf, Jeremy Chippett, and David Eggert, who all supported us. They are all contributing five bucks a month through our sponsorship initiative at gaming.youtube.com slash EPNTV. You guys are incredible. Thanks for jumping in and supporting EPN. You rock, and this rundown is all yours. Sony has no shortage of new games for us to talk about. Earlier today, Sony kicked off the annual Paris Games Week by announcing about a dozen new games for the PS4 and PSVR. First up, infamous and Sly Cooper developer Sucker Punch Productions has finally unveiled their new project. It's called Ghost of Tsushima and is an open world game for the PS4 set in feudal Japan where players take the role of a samurai. The team at Sucker Punch has demonstrated their skills with melee combat and bringing open worlds to life, so needless to say, this one has got us very excited. There's no release window yet for Ghost of Tsushima, but you know we'll have more on the game very soon. That's not the only big game Sony dug up. Spelunky is getting a sequel called What Else? Spelunky 2. And although developer Moss Mouth hasn't shown off any gameplay, we know that the story will see players venture back into the procedurally generated caverns to rescue their daughter. Expect more info as it comes in. Another big indie game is getting a sequel. Guacamelee 2 is a sequel to the 2013 platformer from Toronto-based Drinkbox Studios. The new game will have the same art style, and this time around there will be four player co-op. It'll arrive on the PS4 as well as the PC in 2018. Sony has another stylish game with Concrete Genie, an adventure game where players can create artwork that then comes to life. That will paint the town any color you like next year on the PS4. Erica is a thriller where players try to unravel a mystery, and the thing that makes this one unique is that it's built for Sony's new PlayLink service, which allows you to control the PS4 with inputs from a smartphone or tablet. The Gardens Between, a side-scrolling puzzler that was first announced for the PC earlier this year is coming to the PS4 as well. Players control the flow of time in order to solve different puzzles in a surreal world. The PC version arrives soon and the PS4 version comes next year. It's not just PS4 games that Sony unveiled, they showed off loads of new games for the PlayStation VR. Dead Hungry is a VR cooking game with a twist. Players must prepare food for approaching zombies, and if you don't do it quickly enough, they'll eat you instead. It's being made by developer Q Games, the same studio behind the Pixel Junk titles, and will hit the PSVR next year. Playful, the studio behind the Oculus Rift exclusive Lucky's Tale, is jumping over to the PlayStation VR. They showed off the first trailer for their PSVR game, Star Child, which they first announced at E3 earlier this year. It's a cinematic platformer set in a mysterious sci-fi world, and given how much fun we had with Lucky's Tale, we can't wait to find out more. Also for the PSVR is Bow to Blood, a shooter where players control massive airships and then take on each other in huge procedurally generated battle environments. Another bloody game is Blood and Truth, a first-person shooter where players take the role of a spy armed with guns, as well as an assortment of James Bond-style gadgets. Megalith is a PSVR game where you stomp around as a massive godlike creature and then battle other creatures for victory. That arrives next year. Finally, if you're tired of all these games coming out next year, Sony has pulled the old announce a game and release it the same day gimmick with a new title called O-Ray. It's a flying game set in a journey style world, although it's only on the PS4 and isn't coming to the PSVR. That's it for new game announcements, but Sony also showed off new footage of Detroit Become Human, God of War 4, the new Spider-Man game, and The Last of Us Part 2. All of those games, as well as most of the new titles they announced today, are coming out next year. With all these games, Sony is hoping that 2018 will be a big year for the PS4, which is good, because this year hasn't really seen too many big exclusive titles for the system. The DC movie universe is about to get a whole lot funnier. Warner Brothers and DC have officially announced who will play Shazam in their upcoming movie based on the hero. Shazam will be played by Zachary Levi, best known as the lead in the TV series Chuck, as well as a supporting role as the Asgardian hero Fandral in Marvel's Thor movies. Perhaps next time we should start with the big one. In a statement, Levi says that he's greatly humbled to be joining the DC universe and he's beside himself with gratitude. 
Casting such a comedic actor as a superhero is further proof that the Shazam movie will be taking a much more lighthearted tone than the previous DC movies, something that the film's writer and director David F. Sandberg already stated earlier this year. A comedic tone makes a lot of sense, because the concept behind Shazam is pretty silly to begin with. The character is actually a young boy named Billy Batson who turns into a superhero when he says the magical words, Shazam! Shazam! It's unclear who will be playing the child version in the movie. We do know that Shazam's arch nemesis, Black Adam, is already set to be played by Dwayne The Rock Johnson in his own movie, so don't be surprised if he turns up in the Shazam film as well. The DC movies have been struggling to find the right tone ever since they started, with films like Batman vs Superman and Suicide Squad receiving poor critical reception largely due to their dark and serious nature. The recent Wonder Woman seemed to strike the right balance between seriousness and superhero-ness, so hopefully they'll keep heading on the right track with Shazam. Shooting is slated to begin soon with a release scheduled for 2019. Before that arrives, we'll get to see how things were handled in the Justice League movie, which hits theaters in just two weeks. Don't expect to be taking Player Unknown's Battlegrounds offline anytime soon. There are no plans to give the hugely successful multiplayer game a single-player story campaign. That's according to Player Unknown himself, Brendan Green, who tells GameSpot that although they have developed lore behind the game and its setting, he and the rest of the development team aren't planning to turn this lore into a campaign. He says they just don't have the time or resources to think about a single-player mode or even co-op, so expect them to just focus on expanding the multiplayer for the foreseeable future. This probably won't be much of a disappointment to fans because the game already has millions of players to despite its lack of single player. Battlegrounds is currently in early access on Steam, with the final version expected to arrive before the end of the year, alongside an Xbox One version. One of the most interesting new things about the Nintendo Switch might have just been a happy accident. Last week, the new 4.0 update for the Switch made it possible to connect the aging GameCube controller to the system, although Nintendo didn't make this known in the official update notes. At the time, many speculated that this was because they were secretly on the verge of adding classic GameCube titles to the Switch library, although it turns out that this is probably not the case. Speaking with Kotaku, Nintendo of America president Reggie fils says that the GameCube controller compatibility was an accident that they didn't know about until consumers figured it out. He says that they were trying to make third-party peripherals work on the system, and the GameCube controller just happened to be compatible as well, so it was as much a surprise to them as it was to everyone else. I guess this means we'll have to wait a while before GameCube titles start hitting the Switch, although when they do, it's good to know that it will be possible for Nintendo to allow users to play with the original GameCube controller. In related news, Nintendo has announced the latest sales figures for the Switch. So far, they've already sold 7.63 million units and expect to sell a total of 14 million by the end of March 2018. If they do, it means the Switch will sell more units in its first year than the Wii U did in its entire lifespan. That's our rundown for today. If you'd like to learn more about game design, visit vfs.edu. We'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new episode. In the meantime, there's lots of other content for you to check out. And if you dig it, hit subscribe, that little bell. And if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button. We'll see you tomorrow.